Good evening, I'm Prasad Michael and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. Have you guys seen the film The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise? Remember what the poster looked like? Now just replace Tom Cruise's face with Anwar Ibrahim. Actually, you won't have to imagine because, well, let's see why. PKR President Anwar Ibrahim has been hailed as the last samurai and the last hope at the Hope University Symposium held today entitled The Construct of a Nation. The symposium chairperson Lim Yu Jin also showed Photoshop posters on the projector of what Anwar would look like as the last samurai. Um, let us also keep this symposium at a respectable and intellectual level. As you can see, Malaysia's last hope and the last samurai. To quote Shafi Abdal, he is our last samurai. Speaking to reporters after the event, Anwar Ibrahim reiterated the Harapan is still one team and Prime Minister Dr. Mathur Muhammad should not be pressured on the transition of power issue as he has promised to step down after the APEC summit in November. The Pakatan Harapan Presidential Council will be discussing the transition plan tomorrow. However, Anwar said the transition issue can be resolved in half an hour and the focus is on the economy. How should a police officer interact with the public? I guess it boils down to how cooperative the public are at any given time, but does that warrant shouting? The behaviour of a police officer during a demolition operation of an illegal cow shed in Klang recently caught the eyes of his superiors. <laughs> In a video that has gone viral, the officer can be seen shouting at the public to disperse. Selangor Police Chief Nur Azam Jamaluddin, when contacted by Malaysia Kini, said the officer in question has been called and advised on how to behave when carrying out policing duties. Netizens criticised the behaviour of the officer and described him as unprofessional. Previously, Batu MPP Prabhakaran expressed dissatisfaction with the officer's behaviour. In a statement, Prabhakaran said he viewed the officer's conduct very seriously and demanded PDRM to take strict disciplinary action against cops who have damaged the force's image. Finance Minister Lim Guaning has been targeted by several social media posts in relation to the developments related to Tabung Haji. Fellow Minister Mujahid Yusuf Rawa has had enough of such fake news. The police have been urged to investigate social media posts which alleged that Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng had chaired a meeting in relation to Tabung Haji. The Islamic Affairs Minister's office said one of its officers lodged a police report yesterday. The photograph used in the social media post depicted a visit by its Minister Mujahid Yusuf Rawa and Department of Islamic Development Malaysia officials last year. The purpose of the visit was to explain the Rahmatan Lil Alamin movement, a multicultural concept introduced by the government. The spread of the photograph followed the revelation that the operations of four Tabung Haji hotels had been transferred to the Ministry of Finance Special Purpose Vehicle, Urus Harga Jama'ah Sendrian Berhad. The Islamic Affairs Minister's Office viewed this as a deliberate attempt to spread religious and racial hatred. They urged the public not to spread fake news, alleging that Lim chaired the meeting. Yesterday, Mujahid had shared proof that the photographs did, in fact, depict a meeting that happened in 2019. Harapan's power transition has been a recurring topic and it appears to have reached its peak with the allegations of a plot to keep Martha in the driver's seat for a full term and with the coalition set to discuss details of the transition tomorrow at its presidential council meeting. There have been calls for Prime Minister Dr. Mathur Muhammad to join forces with PAS and UMNO in a purported Pakatan National Coalition. However, when quizzed on whether he supports the idea, Bersatu Youth Chief, Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman, sidestepped the issue. Saya agak yakin majority anak muda di Malaysia ingin melihat masalah uh, uh, asas mereka diselesaikan dahulu. I mean, let's focus on that lah. Um, saya dah bincang dengan begitu panjang tadi bersama dengan uh, Wan Saiful, dengan uh, yang, yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri, Menteri Kewangan untuk bincangkan isu PTPTN yang insya Allah akan ada jalan penyelesaian the Youth and Sports Minister also said there are many other issues the government needs to look at and the focus should be on core issues. Talk of a Pakatan National Coalition surfaced soon after it was revealed that AMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi was canvassing for support among party leaders to work with Mahathir. Both Mahathir and PKR leader Anwar Ibrahim have alluded that such a plot exists where it was speculated that a group from PAS, AMNO and PKR members are signing written pledges to back Mahathir as Prime Minister for a full term. 
Coming up next, we continue our conversation with Dr. Christopher Lee. We ask Malaysians what they're doing to keep COVID-19 away. All that and more after this. How did the severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS prepare us for COVID-19? We asked infectious diseases expert Dr. Christopher Lee. So in the case of government response, um, if you look at the region, the way other countries in the region are responding, how would you rate Malaysia's response? A lot will have to do with the current situation on the ground at that locality. In China, it's clearly a sustained human-to-human -human local transmission. You go out on the streets, you meet another human being, you have a risk because it's so common in Wuhan now, especially Wuhan. So they had to take drastic measures because the situation is very bad. Singapore is an interesting case uh, to look at. Currently, they are having more and more Singaporeans being infected without having tra travelled out of Singapore or gone to China in particular. So clearly, there is community spread within uh, uh, limited groups in Singapore. But so far, it appears they still have a control. They can still track everyone down. But as more and more pockets come up, there could be a risk it might spill out and the public health chaps in Singapore may not be able to catch up. And once that happens, it becomes like Wuhan, a sustained local human-to-human -human transmission, which you cannot find a link. In that case, then we may have to do things like what China has to do. Hopefully not, you know. Now, Malaysia, we have not documented any sustained local human-to-human -human transmission so far. Uh, the numbers have been relatively small. Uh, most of them were foreigners. We have some Malaysians who picked it up through interactions with them. So all this we could still tie in. Uh, so we are probably at the moment, based on the data we have here, one step sort of uh, below Singapore in the sense. But you're right, we might get there, we might. And that's why I think it's important for us to continue to be cautious uh, because Singapore and us are so interconnected in a sense. So I think it will be prudent to be aware uh, and continue to have a surveillance on the ground so that if we start picking up signs, our control measures may also need to escalate appropriately. Uh, we see a lot of medical staff in China being infected by it, but not so much here. So what, what may be the key differences? In the, in the health system that's overwhelmed, I can imagine how tired they are. You have seen pictures of them sleeping on the floor, I'm sure. You know, could there be, con could there be missteps along the way? Absolutely, when you get tired. Uh, in Malaysia, if the numbers are small, we can focus on it. We have a designated team who just nothing but look after this coronavirus thing. They don't, don't do any other work. They don't say, oh, today I have a case, I look after this coronavirus, but this afternoon, since I'm free, I'll go to the medical ward to look after patients. No, you can't. We learned that from SARS. When they did this crossover work, if they were contaminated, it would spread to other people beyond the ward. You might say it uh, could be a waste of resources in that sense, but compared to safety, absolutely. I'll, I'll decide on that every day, every hour of the, of the day. So tell us a bit about like, your experience dealing with perhaps SARS in the past and all that. How has that prepared you and the medical team to deal with something like COVID-19? Oh, absolutely. I think the, the, the uh, institutional memory is absolutely important. Uh, SARS, I mean, I'm an ID physician. Was I trained for something like SARS in 2002? <laughs> no, none of us prepared for, for something like SARS, you know. Uh, but SARS actually helped us a lot. We put a lot of protocols in place. WHO is pushing all member states to do that, and we did that as well. So we have a preparedness plan you know, for things like that. So when mers cov came along you know, about 10 years later, uh, we were certainly a lot more prepared. What was your biggest lesson perhaps that take away from, from SARS? That training people, training people, training people. Uh, the, the first, when SARS hit and we saw doctors and nurses dying in Singapore and in Hong Kong, it's a terrible feeling and to send doctors and nurses into harm's way. Uh, that was my biggest takeaway. I think at the end of the day, uh, you, we have to protect our staff. It's the person doing that work day in, day out. Dealing with the patient who, got, who gets angry because I'm stuck here for eight days, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Did we have that? Yes. <laughs> Shouting and screaming away and you go in and pacify them. And uh, uh, I think we bought ice cream for him. Terrible. <laughs> We send in ice cream. It works. Uh, now I learned something. Ice cream works. It cools them down immediately. While healthcare professionals are working around the clock to contain the outbreak, what are Malaysians doing to stay safe? 
We interviewed several people in Klang Valley. This is what they said. More than 2,000 people have died globally from the COVID-19 infection since it first broke out in Wuhan, China more than a month ago. Although Malaysia is not as badly affected as China, Japan or Singapore, we are not all that safe. This leaves us with a question. Are ordinary Malaysians taking extra precautionary steps to keep the virus at bay? Uh, saya memang selalu follow update dengan isu coronavirus ni sebab saya still belajar so uh, saya akan jumpa banyak student yang daripada international juga saya baru basuh tangan dengan pakai mask saya elak tempat yang public lah saya rasa macam takut sebab virus tu amat membahaya lah Yes, it is very concerned and I'm worried about the development of this coronavirus. Well, every night before I go to bed, I watch CNN and I watch Al Jazeera and look at the World Health Organization website. As a precautionary step, some countries have banned the entry of travelers who have visited China in the preceding weeks. These include Singapore, which has more than 80 confirmed COVID-19 cases currently. Meanwhile, Malaysia only imposed travel restrictions on those from cities that have been locked down by the Chinese government because of the outbreak. Is it too little too late? I just, I think it's just mainland Chinese, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I think if your health is concerned, then, then you need to protect yourself. It's not like about racism, it's what if the country has a lot of race and you know, it's just, it's about the disease, not not about the nationality or race. Saya harap government akan ambil langkah yang lebih berjaga-jaga untuk pastikan keselamatan rakyat lebih terjamin lah di masa akan datang. Sebab rakyat dia tak banyak yang educated yang tentang isu ni. KLIA, I think they need to have more stringent controls in installing thermal scanner with the right number of medical personnel who will be screening all the upcoming visitors to the country. And I found it a bit relaxed in Malaysia. There are a total of 22 confirmed COVID-19 cases in Malaysia as of Thursday afternoon. 15 of them have been cured and discharged from hospitals. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Sir Michael. Thank you for watching.